CNN is out with an article on the 22 Democrats who might run in 2020. That's 22 uh, by their count. Now, I'm not going to go through all the people with you because some of them are honestly nobodies and have absolutely zero chance. There's even a few on the list I never heard of, which is, you know, that's unlikely, like that that would have been the case because people who are considering running, you would think somebody who's got their nose in politics day in and day out, the people would at least have enough notoriety where somebody like me could look at it and go, oh yeah, I guess I know who that is, even though they're a peripheral figure or whatever. Um, no, some of them I don't know. So we're not going to go through all of them here. And they didn't even add everybody on the list that they should have added. At the end, I added one or two more that they forgot about. But uh, let me give you, you know, the likelihood that these people run, what their chances are, so on and so forth. So the first one is Howard Schultz. This guy is the CEO of Starbucks. The likelihood he runs is probably not very likely. The chance he has of winning if he were to run, really not not good. You know, this is part of the this new movement and this new idea that seems pervasive in modern times among the establishment that, well, if you're a businessman, you are a serious person by definition. And, you know, you deserve uh, for the voters to give you a fair shot. I hate that kind of thinking. I think it's ridiculous uh, because being in business and being in government are just two totally, totally separate things. Uh, you need different skill set. Um, your aims, your goals are just totally different. In fact, they're diametrically opposed in some instances, in most instances probably. So I never uh, bought that argument, and it actually really annoys me that people who are CEOs or owners of giant uh, corporations... That they're, I mean, it's so arrogant and it's honestly so entitled for them to think like, yeah, I'll just jump into politics and I'll, uh, you know, I'll become president. Because what's, what's left, you know, on the roadside? Policy. These are people that, you know, they're going to run on their aptitude. I'm a good businessman. I did, I, ma I made a lot of profit. That's not what matters in government. You know, what, what are your policies? What are you going to fight for? How are you going to represent the American people? So Howard Schultz, <clears throat> Step aside. Uh, then we have Sheryl Sandberg, Facebook COO. This is yet another example of somebody who, if you bring up Sheryl Sandberg in D.C. or New York or, you know, L.A., uh, you bring them up within that establishment bubble, people will get excited. They'll be like, oh, Sheryl Sandberg. <laughs> bring it up to anybody who's not in that bubble, and they're like, fuck you. <laughs> They just have no interest because, again, it's just so entitled for, you know, these kinds of people to think like, yeah, I'm going to be president. Well, you know, then expect uh, continued Republican victories, even though they're colossally ridiculous and dangerous. All right. Next, Mark Cuban. Oh, God. Oh, I feel a pain in my stomach. Um, this is the Democrats answer of, well, how about we go with our own bombastic billionaire? Now, I showed you the clip from a while ago. It was uh, Jake Tapper and Mark Cuban. They were on Jake Tapper's show, and uh, Jake Tapper basically gets um, Mark Cuban to admit, like, yeah, no, I kind of, I kind of agree with Trump on, and, you know, there's a list of things, taxes, uh, you know, various uh, economic policies, deregulation. Uh, as he portrays himself as this, like, yeah, I'm going to take Trump down and be, like, you know, liberal bombastic billionaire. When you dive into the details, you find out, no, he's on his side. He agrees with him on a lot of things. So the idea that you put this guy in instead of Trump, it's like, well, that's how we know the establishment is screwing us. Because at the end of the day, they still get their tax cuts. They still get their deregulation, which, by the way, threatens the fundamental underpinnings of our economy. There's going to be a giant collapse, and that's one of the main reasons why there's going to be a giant collapse. But they'd rather, hey, which uh, billionaire jackass should we go with? The one who's slightly nicer to minorities or the one who's a total dick to minorities? That's basically the conversation we're having. Now, what's the likelihood he runs? It's still not all that likely, um, but, you know, there's an outside chance Mark Cuban runs. Uh, Martin O'Malley's next. He's number four on the list here. Martin O'Malley um, is a joke. There, he, he has... He ran last time, for those of you who don't know, and you could be forgiven if you, if you don't know because he's that irrelevant. He's the most plastic 1980-style po politician you've ever seen. I'm Martin O'Malley, and I'm going to point at you like this and speak with the politician rhythm and cadence and be super fake. Yeah, and nobody likes you. 
you know, when it comes to his policy positions, he actually was like, you know, somewhere in between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. So he's not as corporatist and corrupt as uh, Hillary Clinton is, but he's so inauthentic that nobody liked him. <laughs> so he's got no chance. He's done rallies where literally one person has showed up or like town hall meetings. It was in Iowa when, you know, right for the Iowa caucus. Oh, let's have a meet up in Iowa. There was one person there. He's done other meetings where he had to buy pizza, tell people it's free to lure them in. And then when they come in there, go, you're going to vote for me, right? So uh, Martin O'Malley, if he does run again, it would just be embarrassing, but also kind of funny. So a little part of me does want to see that. Um, the fifth one is John Hickenlooper. He's the governor of Colorado, Democratic governor. He's um, far too right wing to have a shot. Then we have Terry McAuliffe, a Virginia governor. He's uh, besties with the Clintons, and he's a corporate Democrat extraordinaire. Um, nobody should want Terry McAuliffe to run. Uh, if he were to run, he would get his ass handed to him because it, he would he would not get anybody in the base. The entire base would say, fuck you, right from day one. So it's hilarious that he even thinks he has a shot. Then we go to number eight, Kamala Harris. Now, Kamala Harris, of course, new senator from California. She likes to pretend like she's super progressive. There are some Democrats who've fallen for her pretending that she's super progressive. But remember that uh, I believe she was attorney general of uh, California, and she refused to prosecute Steve Mnuchin and One West Bank as Steve Mnuchin and One West Bank were violating foreclosure laws and kicking senior citizens out of their houses uh, too early. So she's not progressive. She's a sellout. Um, you know, she's a, another corporate Democrat, but she has, she might try to pull the wool over people's eyes and be a little more successful than a guy like Terry McAuliffe. What's the chances she runs? Uh, it's, you're still, it's still not likely yet. You know, there's an outside chance she runs. It's still not likely. We haven't gotten any of those people yet where it's likely. Um, Tim Kaine. We have Tim Kaine. <laughs> Do I even need to say anything about Tim Kaine? The human equivalent of oatmeal. Um... He has the personality of a goldfish. You know, I would rather sit there and watch paint dry than listen to a Tim Kaine speech. He's pro-TPP. He's far too right-wing while pretending he's a leader in the resistance. You know, he speaks like the, um, like, uh, a black comedian's caricature of a white man. <laughs> Tim Kaine, stop it. <laughs> what a silly person. He, he, he might run, but again, outside chance. Um, now we go to the next tier of people who are, uh, a little more likely to run. There are some good names on this list. There are some bad names on this list. <sighs> Cory Booker. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Can't tell you, uh, how much I despise Cory Booker. I despise him with a burning passion. Uh, if Cory Booker were to somehow be able to become the Democratic nominee, de uh, you know, you have, uh, Donald Trump getting four more years. It almost doesn't matter what Trump does but in the rest of his time in office. Because if Cory Booker is the person he's running against, I mean, he is just, he wrote the book on being a corporate Democrat. Hedge funds love him. Wall Street loves him. Big Pharma loves him. He's the guy who voted against Bernie Sanders' bill to import drugs from California for a, a cheaper price, so you pay a cheaper price for your drugs. Uh, and then when he was caught, he had bullshit reason of, well, uh, it's not that I'm against cheaper drugs importing from Canada, it's that I want the FDA to regulate it. Well, number one, they're the same drugs. The, the drugs that are being imported from Canada oftentimes leave the U.S., go to Canada, and then <laughs> the idea is, well, I guess we bring them back in because they're cheaper, because Canada no negotiates a cheaper price for them because they're allowed to negotiate a cheaper price for them. So they're the same drugs, but furthermore, the regulatory bodies in Canada are stricter. So this idea of like, I just want them to be safe. There's no epidemic of people dropping dead from drugs in, in Canada. So you're just a liar. Now, why did he do that? Because Big Pharma, of course, is big in uh, New Jersey, his home state, and he's taking campaign contributions from them, over $300,000. So that's why he did it. And then when there was this giant backlash online and everybody let him know like, hey, you're not going to be president ever because you're such a sellout and you're pathetic. Then he, he flipped. He's like, oh, no, I, I love Bernie Sanders. Now I'm going to go to co-sponsor a bill that's similar to the last one. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys believe me? No, we don't believe you because you're a sellout. He's also for charter schools. He's a joke. A jo an absolute joke. Um, so he's not going to win. He's probably going to run. Not going to win. Okay, then we go to uh, Andrew Cuomo. Now, Andrew Cuomo... 
I would say on the on the corporate Democrat versus justice Democrat scale or corporate Democrat versus progressive Democrat scale, Andrew Cuomo is somewhere in between. Actually, you know what? He's pretty much right where like Obama is. So he's a corporate Democrat. Make no mistake about it. He's corrupt. I mean, for instance, he set up a uh, an anti-corruption board in New York. He's governor of New York. And then when the corruption board was like, oh, cool, now we're going to look into you and your cronies. He's like, anyway, uh, we are now disbanding the corruption board. <laughs> so corporate Democrats, super corrupt. Um, another thing he did that I hated was he cracked down on uh, BDS. So anybody in the government, New York government, who is pro-BDS, they basically get like their contracts revoked immediately. Just anti-free uh, speech crackdown. So he's done a lot of things where you go, oh, you sad, sad person. But then the other part of him is, again, like Obama, he, he he does some progressive things where, you know, he play up those things to try to get elected. Um, so, for example, he recently did a Bernie Sanders backed and inspired free college bill in New York. Now, it's not a perfect bill by any stretch of the imagination. But now, you know, New York is the is the first state that's doing free four year college. Uh, free, free for your community college. So it's a giant step in the right direction. And he, he can use that and run on that. And if he's smart, he would never shut the fuck up about that. Uh, he also increased the minimum wage in New York, which was something that's great. Um, he also did a, a new solid uh, background check bill and gun regulation bill after Sandy Hook. New York was one of the states that actually took action and was able to successfully get through um, regulation like that. So... Yeah, he's done a few good things, but he's also done horrific, corrupt things, which is why I put him pretty much exactly in the category of Obama. Um, out of all the people we've named so far, he's the best, but that doesn't mean much. <laughs> it's still not that good. Okay, then we go to um, then we go to Al Franken. Al Franken is apparently considering a run. Okay, now I immediately go back on what I just said. Um, out of all the people we've named so far, Al Franken is the best. Uh, another thing about Cuomo is he backed Hillary very vocally over Bernie early on, which to me is like, strike one, you're out. You're really not all that progressive if you're that's what you're going to do. Uh, Al Franken, I'm not sure. Who, you guys will know. You can write it in the comment section. I'm not sure if he backed Hillary or Bernie or if he stayed out of it until a certain point or whatever. I would guess he probably backed Hillary as well, which means he's a corporate Democrat too. But I would put him as more progressive than Andrew Cuomo. Um... I actually think he would have a shot if he ran, by the way. And I actually think not only would he have a shot to get through the primary, but if he were to get through the primary, I think he would have a shot to beat Trump. And he's still got a streak of corporate Democrat in him, but there's also, kind of like Obama, he's got that streak of being somewhat progressive on things too. And the thing about Al Franken, he's got this in intangible factor that uh, a lot of these other people don't have, which is he's, he's as good of a public communicator as you can get where he was a comedian. So comedians, they know how to connect with people, they know how to tap into what people are feeling, and they know how to make you laugh, and they know how to be likable in the eyes of people. Now, some people might scoff and be like, Al oh, Franken, pff, silly. But remember, that's exactly what people said about Donald Trump. Like, ah, Donald Trump, yeah, right, like, he was gonna win. <laughs> you could easily see that happening with Al Franken. Like, oh, yeah, Franken, he's gonna win. Everybody said he wasn't gonna become a senator, then he became a senator. Um, and again, out of all the people so far, he's the least corporate, but he's still pretty corporate. All right, then we go to, oh God, oh God, Mark Zuckerberg, oh, oh, Mark, the, the fucking Facebook guy, come on, Mark. He's been doing a tap dance all around the country and just broadcasting his goofiness around the world. Uh, so he was fucking feeding cows in the Midwest, and he was in Michigan on a fucking factory line, like, I have a newfound respect for all these middle-class workers, and all we, we should do is care about their lives and try to make them better. <laughs> and, um, you know, according to his friends, not only does he want to be president, he would like to be emperor of the world. I don't doubt that for a second. I think he would get his ass handed to him. I think he wants to run. Um, he's doing like a fucking tour of the country and and being very vocal about it. Look at me, look at me, look at me. But um yet again, man, I think people are super fucking sick. Like the Democrats are not like the Republicans. The Republicans, you know, they they say like, yeah, we hate celebrities, we hate Hollywood. So stupid. But you give them any celebrity at all and they fucking come in their pants. Like <laughs> 
<laughs> we got Mel Gibson on our side. Ah, Vince Vaughn too. Oh, 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 oh. Clint Eastwood, invite him to the RNC. Have him talk to a chair. It'll be the best thing ever. Oh, 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 oh. oh my God, we hate stars so much. But Donald Trump for president? Oh my God, I love Donald Trump. Let's all go over Donald Trump. I, what happened? I thought you guys hate celebrities until it's fucking Donald Trump and then you pick one to be president. Ronald Reagan was a fucking actor. They say they hate celebrities. No, they love celebrities and they're jealous because a lot of the people in Hollywood don't like them. So, uh, but the Democrats are not like that. Like, you put up Mark Zuckerberg. Hey, the Facebook guy. People be like, and? Go back to your Facebook and bitch. I'm not, this is serious business. We're talking about policy over here. That what, you think the populist left is going to fall in line behind a douchebag billionaire who created a site where you can post about your lunch and like pictures of your family? No, I mean, what the fuck qualification is that to be uh, president? Are you going to do Medicare for all? Are you going to do Medicare for all? Are you going to do a living wage? Are you going to get us out of the wars? So, like, you're taking unserious people and putting them to do serious things. So, I don't think he has any shot if he were to run, but I think he's almost certainly gonna run. He definitely wants to run. Uh, you know who else? Joe Biden. Now, Joe Biden swears up and down he's not gonna run, but everybody, he, he's still out there doing all these things, and the media is going a thousand miles an hour. I don't know what the likelihood is, um, but he might be a little past his time. Uh, then we have Kirsten Gillibrand, senator from New York. You know, Hillary Clinton light, basically probably put her in the same category, similar category as Andrew Cuomo in terms of how progressive she is. Uh, then you have, let me give you one more uh, horrible one, and then we'll get to the last few good ones. Hillary Clinton. She might run again, man. She might run again, man. Uh, <laughs> oh, the, the thing is, she's out there nonstop now. Um... There's no reason to be out there nonstop now. Now you're, now's your time to go in a cave. Go lay on a beach somewhere in Maui. Retire. Do, what, are, what are you doing? <laughs> because she wants to keep her name out there because her ego is so big and she's that narcissistic and selfish that she wants to run. She's considering running again. She wants it more than anything, man. She wants to be president more than anything. For all the wrong reasons, but she wants it. So she's considering it again. If she were to run again, she would be obliterated. I mean, it would be so embarrassing. She, uh, guys, I, I mean, I, I, do I even need to say this? It's so obvious. She greatly overestimates her likability. She's one of the, she's one of the most disliked politicians in the country, but she thinks like, no, no, if I get out there, people will like me. Ah. No, Hillary, people want you to go away, but she's out there. She's pushing a new book. She's, and this was not, remember directly after Mitt Romney lost, did you see him out there? No, you didn't because he lost. Hillary Clinton, because she wants to run again. Oh, God, don't do it. Don't do it. Um, okay, and now we get to the remaining ones, which are uh, decent choices. The only few that are decent. Tulsi Gabbard. Now, this might be a little too soon. Uh, maybe she's not going to run in 2020. Maybe she's thinking more 2024 or something like that. But she has. she's very ambitious, um, and she's uh, one of the best options out there. She's one of the few who's really stuck her nose out there on Syria, uh, where it's super unpopular to say, yeah, you know, Assad sucks, but maybe we don't topple him. Because when we toppled leaders in, uh, when we toppled Gaddafi in Libya, when we toppled Saddam Hussein in Iraq, we saw exactly what happened, and it wasn't good, and it would have been better if we stayed out and never went in in the first place. So how about we do that with Syria? Now, she gets smeared up and down as, you know, a dictator lover, and Assad apologist, and genocide apologist, and... All oh, just smears up and down, but she stuck her fucking nose out there, man, and made it, took a bold stand and hasn't backed down. That's some balls politically that are that's very helpful when you're running for president because when you get those massive condemnations from the establishment, so many politicians shrivel away. But the reality is, what she's saying is actually the position of the American people. The American people don't want to fucking get involved in Syria and another war. We're already doing seven interventions. We want to do another ground war in Syria. Are you kidding me? So the American people are with her, but the establishment, with all their fury, goes after her when she says something like that. Uh, and she goes, yeah, I don't care what you're saying. Also, we all remember what happened. She was had a higher, a pretty high position at the DNC, if I remember correctly, and then after backing Bernie, she was, at, like, excommunicated. She's like, oh yeah, you're out. So she backed Bernie over Hillary early on. 
She also, uh, you know, supports Medicare for All. She proposed the Stop Arming Terrorists Act because the U.S. always happens to funnel arms, whoops, accidentally, to Al-Qaeda and jihadists. So she's against that. She proposed a bill to decriminalize marijuana recently. Um, or it may have even been legalized. I don't remember if it was decriminalized or legalized. It was one or, one or the other. But, so she's on the forefront and, and she really is tapping into, you know, what people really want and she's doing things that are very popular in the polls. Now she has some downsides too. I've spoken about them. She's way too soft on India. Um, India's Modi. It's basically, he's basically the Hindu Taliban. And, um, she's got, has a weird alliance that's been, you know, uh, crafted with them. Uh, I don't agree with her on everything, but she's one of the best. She's one of the best politicians that there is, and it might be a little too soon for her. Time will tell. Okay, then... Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren might run. Now, uh, you guys know my, sh my spiel on her, uh, when she didn't endorse Bernie Sanders, and uh, she did the political calculation of backing Hillary, I think to try to have more sway over them. Uh, the The soon-to-be Clinton administration, in her mind, uh, because she didn't think Bernie had any chance. I don't agree with her. It was a, a calculating move, um, but it wasn't principled. So what she showed is she's no Bernie Sanders. She's not. She used to be squarely in that category. Like, oh, who are the best? Oh, no question. You have Bernie Sanders, you have Elizabeth Warren. Next question. Like, that was, that was the two you'd give when you say who's, you know, the leaders of the progressive wing. But now it's really not uh, Elizabeth Warren anymore. Keep it real because of what she did there. But, but, she's still, like, the second best option. You know what I mean? Like, in the category of the real, you know, progressives, you go Bernie Sanders. Maybe you throw Tulsi in there. And then you have, like, a, li a, a level below them, like the Keith Ellisons and, um, and the Elizabeth Warrens. So... Still a pretty solid choice. She largely gets it, you know, she largely gets it. She's pissed us off a few times, but to pull the lever for her over Trump is a no-brainer. Um, so she might run. In fact, I'm pretty convinced she's going to run, which is good. Uh, and then the last one who might run again is Bernie Sanders. Um, now, would I vote for Bernie Sanders again? Of course. Um, but I do think... I'm, I'm not sure if it would be the best idea for him to run, and here's why. Uh, there are going to be, there's going to be some percentage of people who are just going to look at his age and go, dismissed. And then he has no chance. So, it's not that I wouldn't vote for him because of his age. Of course I'd vote for Bernie Sanders. He's Bernie Sanders. I'd vote for Bernie Sanders' carcass over Donald Trump <laughs> or many of the other Democrats on this list. Um, but... Is there going to be some percentage of people that are just like, Dad, dude, you're a little too old and your time has passed. You know, what do you want me to say? Um, so, I think him and Elizabeth Warren are going to sit down and have a conversation at some point, And they're going to come up with a strategy. And they're going to determine who's running. And, you know, I would think that Bernie would defer to Elizabeth Warren. And um, Bernie will have some sort of role, of course. If he doesn't run or if he does run, he's going to have some sort of role. Uh, but what you'd want is you'd want to have one person who's that real representative of the progressive wing. And then you'd want, you know, unity among the progressives around that one progressive. Because if you have, a, like, let's say Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren run at the same time, you split the progressive vote and then you open the door for a corporate Democrat, like, say, Andrew Cuomo. To, to rise up and get more votes because you've split the dem uh, the the progressive vote and then you know the the partisan hack loyalist Democrat wing could override the progressive wing if you split the progressive wing so this is a little bit more we're getting now more into strategy and stuff but there is a chance that Bernie would run again uh, I think him and Elizabeth Warren need to meet and whoever the other progressive Democrats are who might run Tulsi Gabbard like you need to meet and figure out exactly what your game plan is going forward. But there's your 2020 speculation. We're doing it way too early, but uh, nonetheless, I thought it'd be interesting to give you guys who might run, who almost certainly will run, what their chances are, and just how good of a Democrat they are.